Hello, everybody. It's the Geek Dimensions podcast back for another week, two weeks in a row. I think we're I think we're, we might actually be on a roll. It's a new record. It's a new record, man. Two weeks in a row. Anyway, I'm Stephen Hudson, one of the hosts of this most awesome geek conversation podcast you'll ever listen to. Am I on the wrong show? Yeah. <laughs> and that, my friends, is my good buddy, Paul O'Flaherty, down in Alabama. How you doing, Paul? I'm good. I'm good. Yourself? Not bad. I okay. Let's let's get the most important news out of the way right now. Call of Duty, Advanced Warfare. Um, awesome game. Looks brilliant. Uh, Call of Duty purists are going to hate it. Why? Uh, because of these new exosuits that you use. Progressively, as you play Call of Duty games, um, getting into cover and hiding and hiding behind cover has become kind of demoted. It's, it's become more and more about running fast uh, and lots of skill with the trigger finger. Um, the introduction of these exosuits that leave you jump all over the place a la Titanfall uh, means that color, cover really kind of becomes a thing of the past. It's more something that you run over <laughs> and jump out of the way of. So it introduces a new sort of vertical dynamic to the gameplay that uh, previous Call of Duty games didn't have. And I think a lot of Call of Duty purists... I mean, I remember when people got bent out of shape playing Call of Duty because pre- when they introduced that you could lean at the corner edges of objects and lean out and shoot. Um, so those very same purists are going to get really bent out of shape about this. Uh, I've played about three and a half hours of campaign. And the campaign, it looked gorgeous. I mean, it looks gorgeous. Uh, and in some parts, the modeling, I, I'm a bit disappointed in the modeling, right, of the characters. Okay, because, now, just, just uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the one that they've been touting Kevin Spacey. Is it Kevin Spacey? Yeah, Kevin Spacey looks fucking awesome in it. All right? Kevin Spacey looks bomb. All right? Um, but some of the main characters, some of the main characters have incredible detail and facial expressions. And then there's this really strong female character. I can't remember her name. And it's like, yeah, they just like forgot to update her face from like a model from like four years ago. You know, I mean, it, I was sitting there, I was showing the game off to Sarah and she was like, they didn't do half as much work on her face as they did on hers. Cause there's, there's a bit where just before you invade Kevin Spacey's house, um, you know, there's this sergeant and um, he's a colored bloke. And the, the detail and the expression on his face when he's talking to you is like, it's uncanny valley. Really? Yeah. Uh, and then you have her. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, three and a half hours campaign. Good. Typical Call of Duty fair, you know. Um Campaigns have never been the strongest point. Call of Duty has always been about the uh, the multiplayer. Um, I played multiplayer for about two or three hours. Um, and I've been enjoying it, you know. Uh, no complaints yet, but as I said, uh, purists are not going to like the, uh, the fact that you can work on that. Well, most of my game this past week has been, wow, I've been leveling up a couple characters and having a great time doing it. Love doing it, but the rest of my time, okay. You you you've done design. You've worked with a lot of clients. Yeah. I had a, I had a client come through that I've been doing work for for quite a while now, and we were lining up the process for the next leg of the of the the, the job that I got to do for him, which is, is updating graphics and and images on the website and so on and so forth. Back through the the the, the, the history of the site. We suddenly were having a conversation. He he said to me, he says, by the way, you know all our Google Plus stuff and it's tagged. And I said, no, it's not tagged. He says, what? Now, this is this is a, a website. Their job is they, they go out to the tech events and they report on it. And they've got a massive amount of images in different albums for the different events on Google Plus. On an average, you're looking at about six, between five to seven hundred images per event day. It's a lot of images. None of them were tagged. No location data, no people data, no facial recognition, no nothing. 
And and this all happened before your tenure, I'm assuming. Yes. So suddenly, everything else I've been doing has been put on hold, except for the the the, the, the covering of the web set, web for their their events for their Facebook page. Everything else is being put on hold until I get everything caught up this way. That's a now, pretty neat job, man. Here's the thing. I'll give you an example. Uh, in the space of two and a half days, I processed just under 7,000 images, and I haven't even made it to the halfway point of 200, 2014. Uh... To the rescue. Now, I thought I was going to have to do this all through um, Google+. Plus image editor you know click on an image and do all the editing go on someone says look try picasso because you can pull in and sync yeah google plus images with it have you I'm, never used picasso before no i never had um i oh no that, that's a lie i had looked at it i'd had it installed and i played with it and i just said i didn't have a use for it so i uninstalled it well, I reinstalled it this time, and I hooked it up to, to their Google Plus account, and I pulled in all the images, and I'll tell you something. The only reason I got 7,000 images done in two and a half days was because of Picasso. Literally. The only way I could have done it. And granted, I have a shitload more to do, but at least with Picasso, I, that is, right now that's probably my, my most favorite Google product in the world. <laughs> Just the most favorite i they're hands down so my advice to anybody is if you have a lot of work to do with i i wish they had facebook uh in integration with it as well yeah i think that would be kind of, asking a bit <laughs> yeah no i understand that <clears throat> but if you if you are doing a lot of image processing like data wise picasa is the boss it really really is i love it and it's going to have a permanent place on any computer I have. Speaking of Google products that you love or maybe don't, um, you sent me an invite to Inbox. Yes. Which I've only been able to superficially play with. Uh, for those of you who don't know, email, Inbox is their new uh, – it's not a replacement for Gmail. It's a completely different approach to email um, yes. because they also just replaced Gmail 5. Are uh, dropped the Gmail app, Gmail Five app, and that's that's pretty awesome. But I wanted to talk about Inbox because, um, as I said, I've only gotten to play with it superficially because it doesn't work with Google Apps yet, which is where all my shit is. Yeah. So there's not a lot going on on uh, on the Google account that it's hooked up to. So what are your impressions of it? Uh, okay. Um, I'm in the same boat as you are. Like I only have my my one Gmail account. Everything else goes through my domain accounts. So I don't have a lot of mail coming through through my my Gmail account. So I don't really get to play with it as much as I would like to. But I got to say like from what I understand the design specs for Inbox are is is like based on Lollipop. Yes. Like, and if that's same, the way it, it's the same with uh, Gmail Five. I mean, there it's not. What, what are they calling it now? Material design. Yes, is, material design. They rolled that out for the new calendar app as well. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. I wish I could use it with my other email accounts. I really do. I like. I'm not sure. I quite understand how their bundling works. Okay, and that's their their you know. They started with Gmail with the the social, the update, the um, primary like tabs that your mail would get separated into. They've carried that one step further with Inbox, and you basically create bundles. Yeah, and and be able to I guess basically track everything through these bundles. <clears throat> but I haven't had a lot of chance to play with it because like like you, like I said, it, it's it's um one account that I don't use very often, but I like the design. I really, really like this material uh, design that they're, they're going with. And I hope they, they you know, that it, it I honestly believe, I, I would, if I had a chance to run an operating system with that kind of design ethos, I would probably go for it. I like it that much. Oh, oh, lollipop. <laughs> yeah, but that's, but that's Android, okay? Like you're not gonna okay. Granted, they're supposedly gonna bring it to Chrome as well, 
but that's not a desktop operating system yet. Yeah, I hear you. Right? But I, I like the design. I like well, where they're going. I, I, as techies, we like the design, but my wife, for example, does not like the material design because it's so much like uh, Google+. Plus. Really? Yeah. Sarah does not like it. I okay. That's. I, I'm I'm curious. I, no, does, does she have a reason for for not liking it, or is it just? <laughs> she hasn't really expressed a proper reason as to why she doesn't like it. But she has never been sort of impressed with the uh, with the Google Plus design ethos, and um, you know, there's been times when it's been quite jarring as well. But you know, um. She's not liking it. She, she she doesn't like the Google Plus interface, uh, I presume. But then again, you know, that said, um, she's going to hate me for saying this, but I, I don't think she's given it a lot of traction either. But um, okay, now, he, her initial impressions are, and I suppose they're the most important impressions because they're what make you decide whether or not you're going to use something. And bear in mind, Sarah is a heavy Android user. I mean, for her, it's pretty much Android or nothing, right? Yeah. She don't like it. So I, I, I've got a feeling she's going to be very disappointed for, with Lollipop, but uh, I don't know. Okay, now, you've, you, you've, you've been using the, the Gmail 5, right? Yes. How is it as an experience? Because like, I, I can't, because of the moment I, I blow it up Gmail, it says, well, you're, you're, you're now being handled by Inbox. By Inbox, yeah. No, I, I, I like it. Um, I'm happy with it. it, it, it as I said, it's a lot like... Uh, Google Plus, um, you know, do you know, I don't have a complaint about it. it. To me, it's just a visual overhaul. Uh, it makes a lot of sense. And I'm managing like three or four, um, different, um, accounts on it, a couple of apps accounts and a couple of accounts that are, you know, aggregators of many, many, many other accounts. If Google could improve anything, I want them to improve bloody hangouts. I don't know who came up oh. with this. Or fucking hangouts on the phone, you know, <clears throat> because you want to send a text message, it's a pain in the ass. Especially once you have more than one account on the phone, it becomes ridiculous. That's where I would like Google to overhaul. Yeah, overhaul the Hangouts interface on. Well, mobile. one of my biggest complaints with with Hangouts was the fact you basically had to run a browser window for it to be working. No, right? no, no, no. Not, not about- now. Not now. Messaging. Yeah, but I, I'm talking about the Google Hangouts on your desktop and so on and so forth. To run Google Hangouts, you had to have an open browser to the to to enable access to Hangouts. Well, they've changed that. Now you have a separate desktop app to run, but it is borky. It 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 has problems, and I wish they would get it fixed. I like that the fact that they come up with basically a separate app for it. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about the fact that. Right now on my phone, right? You use I use Hangouts with Google Voice to make my phone calls, to send my text messages, and I also get all my chats through it. Okay? But it's a pain in the ass to easily text Sarah, for example. If I open it up and she's not there immediately in front of me, I've got to search for her which means selecting one tab that's not the dialer or not the, the other thing. Then then once I select, once I actually get it, get her up, get it up there, uh, that sounds bad. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, if I go to Messenger, I have to actually, once I'm inside the messaging thing, then I have to select whether or not I'm messaging via Hangouts or I'm sending a fucking SMS. It It, it should be a lot easier. It should be like, there's your contact. What do you want to do? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And not, it's like five clicks before I send something. And heaven forbid that I'm in like a different account <laughs> beforehand. Cause then it's, it's even worse. Yeah. I've got to say. Okay. On, on a bit of a lighter note, I, we, I just put this one here cause I thought it was, so I actually came up tonight and I thought it was hilarious. But did you see this, the, the, the the story Microsoft Surface used as an iPad kickstand on CNN Live. You know what? Now he, he, here's the thing that's going on here. Uh, Microsoft obviously paid a lot of money for that. Oh yeah. Uh, I, 
I expect Microsoft to be getting a really big refund. Oh, I would be. I would be. Because, but you know, this is, this is probably one, you know, that wouldn't, that wouldn't happen fucking in my business. I'll tell you that for nothing. No, I, but isn't that kind of like, we said this pre-show, like the, the, the whole thing now, of bring your own devices to work. Yeah, you know, and here's the problem. Yeah, if you have a bring your own device culture, okay, so you bring your iPad, okay, but I'm telling you you're using this thing. But you're not going to use this thing if you have your iPad with you. But you know what? Every one of those um, commenters, broadcasters, hosts, whatever you want to call them, right, they should be the one paying Microsoft back because they were very they, – they had to have been told, right? Yeah. You're using the Microsoft surfaces here. Microsoft is paying for this advertising time, right? Yeah. And they didn't. A lot of wrists are going to get slapped over like, that. That's like a, kind of a big black eye on Microsoft. You know, like I, I just, sure, we laugh about it. But you can just imagine the marketing people at Microsoft are just banging their heads against a wall. Somebody got fired. I guarantee you somebody got fired for that because that's major marketing dollars. But it wasn't the people who should have gotten fired for it. Yeah, yeah. You know? Um, and, you know, I mean, the Surface Pro 3, man. That's a pretty, you know, sexy-looking device. Dude, I was at, I was at the um, – we were at the doctor's office yesterday afternoon. We were getting uh, – Sarah was getting blood drawn. It was um, one of the pregnancy checkups, you know? Yeah. And uh doctor comes in with a Surface Pro 3, man. We spend the first five minutes just talking. <laughs> about you know? And he's loving it. I mean, he's like, you know, we can't we can't run our CMSs with an iPad, because even with the iPad stylus, stuff is too small, still can't click on it. He's like, I need the bigger screen and I need these little pen styluses. And he, he he's just he's all happy about it. He, Running the Surface Pro, rocking the Surface Pro Three, man, and I was like, I'm jealous. I want one, but the other side of me is I can't justify, you know, nineteen hundred bucks for a tablet. Well, could you justify it for an HP Sprout? If I could justify it for a tablet, <laughs> I'm sorry, but this thing is called Sprout, and they want nineteen hundred dollars for this piece of plasticized crap i'm sorry that's my gut reaction i saw i saw this and i was like i didn't know whether i wanted to laugh or just click my head goodbye i think it's stupid well it is and it isn't okay this is a very niche device no shit it's a very niche device for people i i actually know a lot of hobbyists who do like create their own jewelry and shit and sell it on Etsy for whom this will be awesome. Okay. Uh, Cause what it does is what you have here is you've basically got a standard 23 inch touchscreen monitor PC, but it's also got a touchscreen that goes lays on the desktop. So think, think of it like a, a, a flat tablet touchscreen on the actual desktop. Okay. And then on the top of it, you've got a camera that will, uh, um that has a depth sensor and a dlp projector as well so you can then play stuff on your touch screen and you can take some pretty awesome images of the stuff that you're creating and you can put stuff in the background uh so in that sort of sense for making you know 3d stuff um using it as a scanner capturing two-dimensional images or you know um and of course with the dlp projector it allows you sort of do a pseudo 3D. They're saying that you can manipulate it. It's obviously not going to be Iron Man style manipulation, but um, you know, it's a pretty interesting idea for people who have a need for this kind of stuff. But as a mainstream computer, no, it's not going to be a mainstream computer. Do you know what? It doesn't cost any more than a Surface Pro Three. So, I you know, I would probably it, take a Surface Pro Three first if it's going. But you're not doing that kind of work. Right? True, true. But if it's going to save you time in your workflow or you're somebody who uses a graphics tablet or whatever, uh, you know, this is the kind of thing that's going to save you time. And if it's going to if it's going to save you time, 
with which you can make money that it's worth the cost, right? True. But I, I, I want, but I won't ever be buying it. No, no, I, I wouldn't either. Like, but I can immediately think of people who would. I can think of usage cases from my own friends. You know. So. Yeah. Um. Here, this one was rather interesting. I, I got to get your aspect on this, but. A while ago, NSA whistleblower Snowden, he caused a little bit of controversy when he said he advised consumers to get rid of Dropbox if they wanted to protect their privacy. Yes. Today, Drew Houston, who is the CEO of Dropbox, directly responded to, to those accusations by saying it's a trade off between usability and convenience and security. He said, we offer people choice. In other words, you can either have the, 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 the ease of use of Dropbox or you can be secure. No, it, it's not a trade-off. There is not really a trade-off. I mean, there's no reason why they can't have everything fully encrypted on their side. There's none. They don't have to give back their access to anybody. There's no reason. The only risk should be that somebody can hack in and rip all the files, but the files should be encrypted on their side. I, I got to admit, my when I read this and I read the whole story, I was, my first reaction was to basically mothball my Dropbox account and go looking for another alternative, which is interesting because Microsoft, I don't know whether you know it, but they recently made a deal or, or it's Office 365 instituted you, you can save to dropbox now as, yeah. as, as, as well as yeah. one drive um you know here's the thing right the cloud's not secure your home computer's not secure okay doesn't matter where you save something it's vulnerable to something okay <clears throat> but at, at its most basic level of uh, we'll encrypt your files they're encrypted pre-transport, encrypted during transport, and encrypted at our side. Right? Yep. There's no reason that that has ever got to be compromised. You know? And you know what? If you don't like Dropbox, you want to take security into your own hands, then try um, a BitTorrent Sync. You know? Run your own cloud from home. Pretty simple. Yeah. I, I actually we've we've used that a couple of times. I, I love BitTorrent Sync. I have BitTorrent Sync set up as the default um, backup solution for like Sarah's computer. Okay, so you know I, I'm not backing up her OS because it's just not worth the hassle, right? It's much easier just to to reinstall from a thumb drive, right? But all of her files where she stores them, all of that is immediately. Uh, synced to a server at home no matter where she is as long as she has an internet connection and it's uh and it's all encrypted you know and uh you know run it through a vpn if you want even more encryption you want even more security there, there's no look security should not be a trade-off in fact given what we know about nsa capabilities given um, the apparent increase in hacks, given all that we know about, you know, all the all the attack vectors that are coming in, security should not be a trade off. Security should be the default, and you don't have to give up much convenience to be secure. Yeah, and if, and if Dropbox really wants to get big business on board. Besides just partnership deals with Microsoft, then they're going to need to put security first. Yeah, I that, like so I said, like I'm I'm still I may actually go the route that you go, but I don't you know it, it's the torrent sync is awesome. I mean, you can access it from any computer. You don't have to download the files from every computer. You can just, eh, eh, look if you have a VPN, a BitTorrent sync, you are good to go. You can sync your stuff to a centralized server anywhere, and you can share those folders with people that you trust without relying on somebody else's centralized, uh, somebody else's cloud. You know, 
Uh, while we're on on the subject of of hacking and stuff like that, you you got this post, and actually I I saw it myself earlier. But the EFF wants to legalize bringing abandoned games back online. Yeah. I, okay. So here's the deal, right? Uh, you go and you buy a game today, right? And the publisher goes out of business, or you know they decide. Uh, you know what? We're, this game is now seven years old, eight years old. We're not going to support this game anymore. So we're not going to issue any patches, right? That's fine. No more security patches. We're we're all used to that thing yeah. from the end of the life cycle. Yep. Okay. Uh, we're not going to run servers, so you can't play anymore. Okay. That's fine. But I've paid for this game. I want to be able to play it. And I want to be able to play it. So legally, I can't hack it to play it. But it's mine. I've purchased it. And I want to be able to play it. <laughs> Either I want to get around a DRM so that I can uh, use it on my uh, on a newer operating system, or I need to change something so that I can make it compatible with another operating, you know, with Windows 8, or I need to, uh, or I just want to restore the fucking functionality that I paid for. Yep. Um, so yeah, I'm 100% behind the EFF pushing for this. Um, I want it too. I mean, I would love. I would love to be able to, like, um, you know, take out Halo 1 and set up a server. And... You know what I mean? Hey, are you looking forward to the uh, the big reissue, the like the master? I, I pre-ordered it the day they said it was going to be done. Apparently, there, there wasn't even a release date. And it's the same with Halo 5. I, went, I, I was in looking at uh, Amazon the other day, and, you know, you go in and look at your list of orders. And I, I, I'm like... Early last year, I pre-ordered Halo 5, and it still says on it, like, December 31st, 2015, because they don't have a release date. <laughs> <laughs> like, Halo, oh, there's a Halo game, I can pre-order. Okay, bang. Yeah, yeah done. done. <laughs> same, same with Call of Duty. You know, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I'm just, I, I'm a slave to those franchises. What can I say? Just, uh, I'm curious. Uh, yes, I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited in the same way as I was excited about the 10th anniversary edition, the CE edition of uh, Halo 1. Um, and, you know, this is going to be all the Master Chief games upgraded for Xbox One. So this will now be like the fifth time that I've bought Halo 1 because I had it on the Xbox, I had it on the PC, uh, I got the CE edition for Xbox 360. Um getting it now for, for Xbox One uh, and I'm sure there's something else in there as well at another time. So. Apparently some of like some of the images I've seen of the maps that they're they're re, um what are they doing uh HDing if you want to go that route are yeah. look absolutely gorgeous. Well did you play the CE edition of Halo One? I don't know. I I okay. know so I I played one well, if you can get hold of it for your 360 do, right? Yeah. Because it's worth it because the 360 was so much powerful, more powerful than what the original needed. That they actually ran. My understanding is that they ran the original game in engine simultaneously with the new game engine. So you could just press on your controller, and you could see it would flip right back to the old graphics. <laughs> it's just like wow, ridiculous night and day. And if they have done half a job as updating um, to Xbox One standards. And by the way, Xbox One standards are not Call of Duty Ghosts graphic standards. Right now, Xbox One graphic standards for me is Advanced Warfare. Because she pretty, man. <laughs> and, you know, Ghosts kind of look like um, a late stage 360 game. It looked better, but you could almost be forgiven for thinking it was a late game. This, this is... This is... What I would have wanted to see on uh, on launch, really, uh, for Xbox One, and it gives me hope that in two or three years, this, you know, that's going to be the minimum standard. Because you know yourself, the longer consoles and computers are out, yeah, 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 the better the graphics get. Yeah, people know all the tricks and shit. How's your How's your television viewing been going? Like, what's uh... in television viewing? I'll tell you exactly how much television I've watched this week. I have watched uh, Doctor Who, and Doctor Who. Are you are you getting back more to liking or being happy? So it was not bad, but let's get rid of Clara. Okay, 
just get rid of her. Let's get this. <laughs> uh, I love Capaldi. Uh, Ka- all of Clara's weaknesses as a companion are just shining true now, and it's just uh, and you know bad story writing too. But he is awesome as the Doctor. Uh, Agents of Shield. Um, interested to see where they're going with it. Uh, not quite sure how I feel about the last episode. The last episode was slightly weak sauce. It's it, it's good to see um, what's her name, Fitzer Simmons. Yep. Uh, whatever she is back, but you know, I don't know what they're gonna do with the guy. He's half vegetable. If they miraculously fix, I, I, I want to see it evolve into a plot line where she was off, like trying to get some other drug, like the drug that they did for Colson to restore. Yeah or whatever. Uh, we'll see where that goes. Not quite sure how I feel about the introducing of this new female character, the tall one, uh, who is your man's, uh, who's the mercenary guy's ex-wife. She reminds me too much of Black Widow. Um, she even fights oh, the, the same. The Black Canary. And uses the same fucking weapons. And I'm like, he's too much the same. Um, you know, we we need a little uh, variety. Um have you been watching Gotham at all? Gotham, yes. Uh, just watched uh, episode six. Um, okay, now, no spoilers, please, because I I've got to be honest. My television watching has been like obviously because of everything going on. Me next, no, I basically booked this weekend coming up to get caught up on things like Agents of Shield, Gotham, and. My television watching sounds like a lot of television watching, but it's not right. Each one of these is forty minutes. Yeah. Okay. I watch them without adverts, pretty much back to back. Yeah. Right. You're talking. I do less than three hours in front yeah. of the TV a week. Yeah. You know. Um, Z Nation. Um, strangely compelling for a really bad zombie show. Constantine. Uh, bum, bum, bum. Has there been a new one this week? There's only been two episodes out. Right? Yeah. There's only been two episodes. I was wondering if you, you. Yeah. Uh. They introduced Zed. 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 Constantine, again, has potential to be awesome, I, I, but I will never be able to watch an episode of this show without thinking this needed to be made by HBO or at least a network. Um, 12, 12 Monkeys premiered as well. I have not sat and watched it yet, but that's, that's one I really want to watch. Be- huh. Yeah, it, it I, premiered this past week. Well, that snuck past me then, because I haven't, uh, so I'll have to uh, make sure I... Get that wherever the heck it is. What now, network is that? Uh, TMT, I think. TMT. Well, yeah, they TMT. Have, they have a they have a chance to do it good because they um I mean they they've done a good job with uh, uh Walking Dead this season. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so you know. Now here's one that totally flew right by me. I didn't know that he had written this book. But apparently, three thousand and one, the final Odyssey is coming to Sci-Fi. Yeah, Odyssey Clark. Um, I didn't even know he written the book. I knew there was more out there, but I haven't read it. Um, uh, so I don't know. I mean, it's Arthur C. Clarke. It should be good. Two thousand and one, Space Odyssey, awesome. Of course, it's legendary in sort of sci-fi culture. Um, the only saving grace I, I can. Will it translate to a TV series? We'll have to wait and see. They're doing it as a miniseries, but I think the only thing that really has any saving grace as far as I'm concerned right now is the fact that it's in, in the hands of Ridley Scott. It, yeah. It, um, you know. But again, you know, Ridley Scott. Ridley, Ridley Scott. Squat. Ridley Scott, great movie maker. What's his TV track record like, though? Um, well, he's doing, isn't he not the one that's doing the, 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 the Halo series on, well, for the now defunct Xbox Entertainment? Yes, he's doing Halo. Yeah. Uh, trailer, yeah. The trailer for that looks really good. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of interested to see where they go with that. Now, I know, I know a lot of people like, what was that other, the, the Halo one that they had, uh, that was like a prequel. The, the Spartan Kids. Of uh, the uh, forward onto dawn. Yes, I, I liked that. I'm sorry. I I really? thought it was I thought it was okay. The only person I know that actually liked Halo onto dawn, and it took me like three attempts to watch the damn movie. I just I, couldn't pass some of the silliness, you know. Um, 
one, the kids weren't young enough for Spartan training. <laughs> My understanding from Halo lore is that they took them a lot younger. Uh, think more like the movie Soldiers with uh, Kurt Russell. Soldier, sorry, with Kurt Russell. Um, I could be wrong on that. Let us know. Um, but also, the main guy kid was a whiny little shit. And the main girl had these impossible inflatable Botox lips. <laughs> I just couldn't look at her and just... I, I'm like, you are... As somebody who, you know, ex-military, you know, um, I, I couldn't look at them and the way they were dressed and the way they behaved themselves and the way they were purporting themselves and think, yeah, really, these guys have military training. You know what I mean? I, I, I just couldn't. I, I, I know Halo is not the real world, but there was slightly too much suspension of disbelief in that particular film. I, like I said, I, I didn't mind it. I thought it was it was okay. It's not something that went, went in my top ten list. Um, by the way, if you really want a good uh, selection of short films to watch, mm -hmm. every Sunday I do, I, I throw up on uh, Geek Dimensions. Uh, it's, it's a short film festival. And I usually have about four or five short films that are good. They range from everywhere, from horror to sci-fi to, you know, you name it. And uh, maybe on a Sunday, you just want something to watch for 15, 20 minutes, slap on one of those. They're, they're, I try and keep the quality up there. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know. 3001, I, I, I want it to be good, like just like I like every show to be good that, that you know, deals with science fiction or fantasies. It's not all of them pull through. No, not all of them do. Let me just very quickly, I, I just want to see. Uh... 3001, uh, what's it called? Space Odyssey or the Final Odyssey? The Final Odyssey. Because obviously I want to read the book, if there is a book. You know, there, uh, yeah, uh, it's, it, it, apparently like it took like 30, 20 years for it to, to be written. Uh, so it's, right now it's 5 bucks 49 on uh, Amazon. Yeah, it took over 30 years for Clark to write the Odyssey series, starting in 1968 with 2001 Space Odyssey and finishing with 3001 in 1997. Yeah, there's 2001 Space Odyssey, 2010 Odyssey 2, 2061 Odyssey 3, and this is then the, the fourth book in the series. Yeah. So that means I've got more books to go back and read. Oh, shit. <laughs> too many books. Too many books. God damn, there's too many books. But on that note, have you got any uh, anything you're looking forward to this next week up up ahead? Um, looking forward to this next week up ahead. Um, I'm just gonna keep making growling noises while I try to think. <laughs> well, I, actually, what um, I, I it's like, well, obviously, um, you're recording Geek Dimensions uh, Tuesday, thank you. Yes, week. yes, and possibly with possibly with Daniel from possibly. The yeah. Because uh, I will not be here because I'm wrap up my work uh, night time is next week and Wednesday, of course, is Sarah's birthday. So, uh, oh, you give her a big hug and a kiss on her birthday for me. I'll give her something. Oh, you better. <laughs> you better, dude. <laughs> um. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, so so that's kind of me out of commission uh, next week. Um, so other than that, I think it's just going to be kind of like client work. Um. Yeah, I don't have a lot really. I haven't come across any cool new stuff. We talked about the cool new stuff this week. I mean, we talked about uh, Inbox yep. and uh, HTML5. Um. Well, the HTML5 is now standard. <laughs> HTML5 is now standard. Yay! By the time <laughs> it only took ten years. It's a standard, you know. Standards can't become standards until the next thing is here. Yeah, all, all I know right now is I'm I'm gearing up to try and save my pennies because I, I I'm making a commitment to myself that by December, I am going to be boost boosting up to uh, cable internet speeds. Oh, you know what? Yes, there is something. You're right. So Nexus Nine. Oh yes, I would love. To. I am reading some bad reviews, man. 
Yeah, apparently this it's like the the quality is like not that no, good. The, the the quality is okay. I mean, you know, it, it's it, it, quality wise, it's a bigger Nexus Five. Um, where I'm reading is given the powerhouse processor that it has, sixty four bit powerhouse processor, and it's got um, uh. You know, it, it, it's got a Tegra graphic. It's got a graphics chip as well. But it's way underperforming in comparison to an iPad Air 2. Really? One caveat to that statement, though, is pretty much everybody who reviewed it said that Google pushed an update like hours before the reviews went live and they didn't get a chance to test it. And those that update was to fix that very problem. So, we'll have to wait and see in terms of the updates. Because it's got to be, it's not a hardware issue. The hardware is powerful. Yeah. But whether or not they can fix the issue in software. Because, here's the thing, the slowdowns that they're seeing are not happening on the, on on anything else running Lollipop. So, it's just the tablet. So it's just the 9, which means it's probably a software issue that they will fix so i'll be holding out to get the nexus line. i would love to get one but unfortunately i got like i said i want to get up uh, because there's so many other things i want to do but my internet connection is just it's killing me right now it's just it i i, I gotta upgrade my machine it desperately needs a, a an upgrade but before that i I've, I've got to upgrade my internet so yeah i i'm i'm sick the podcast man yeah Anybody wants to, you know, donate to help the cause, no problem. I'll gladly take it. On that note, though, um, I will head back to my famous Google Plus memory of our image fixing problem. And Paul will head out to, uh, to have an evening with his wife and children. I I'm going to spend some time with Sarah um, before she falls asleep from uh, pregnancy tiredness. I'm going to spend some time with Malcolm, and uh, then I'm going to settle in front of the Xbox One for a while. Yeah, I'm, I, I've, I've definitely got some wow time coming up to me tonight. But on that note, folks, Paul says good night. I say good night. And we both say, remember, the most important thing, keep it geek. <laughs>